Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn how to understand the output of the show IP NAT translation command. And strap yourself in for this one, it's going to get a little bit hairy. If you've already watched a few lectures in a row, now's probably a good time to grab yourself a coffee before we get started with this one. You can see here we've got inside global, inside local, outside local, and outside global. Now, this is one of the most confusing and complicated things you're going to have to learn for the CCNA. So you probably will find this a bit confusing if it's the first time you've seen it before. Actually, if it's the second time you've seen it. To be honest, I've been working with this stuff for years and it still sometimes makes my head feel like it's going to explode when I'm figuring out what inside global, what inside local, outside local and outside global is. So let me give you a definition. And my definition is a little bit different for some of these than you'll see in the official material. And the reason is I'm trying to make it easier to understand here. The official material makes it super complicated. So hopefully this will make it a bit easier to understand. So the definitions inside a local address, that's the IP address actually configured on the inside host's operating system. So if we go back to the output from the show IP NAT translation again, you see the inside local is 10.0.1.10. So that, and if I go back to the network diagram again, all the way back here, that is the IP address of interface server 1, 10.0.1.10. That's what's actually configured in the Windows operating system. Moving on to the next one. The next definition is inside global address. That is the NATed address of the inside host as it will be reached by the outside network. So if somebody on the outside network is sending traffic in, what address are they going to be using as their destination address? So in our example, the inside global address is 203.0.113.3. So inside local, that's the private address on the inside. Inside global is the public address that is used to reach the inside host. Next one, outside local address. That is the IP address of the outside host as it appears to the inside network. So if I was a user and I went on to that server in S1 and sent some traffic to that host on the outside, what IP address would I use? Well, in our example, I would be using 203.0.113.20. The last one is the outside global address. This is the IP address assigned to the host on the outside network by the host's owner. So in our example here, it's the same again, 203.0.113.20. But you may be thinking, well, okay, no, it's, it's probably using a private IP address as well. So it's not actually going to be that. But the thing is, from R1's point of view, it doesn't know anything about that. So router R1 in our example knows one address to reach the outside host, 203.0.113.20, and it does not translate that address. So for one-way NAT, the outside local and outside global addresses will be reported as being the same. So looking back at the output again from our show IP NAT translation command, inside local is the private address on the inside, 10.0.1.10. Inside global is the NATed address, 203.0.113.3. And then outside local and outside global are both 203.0.113.20 because R1 is not translating that address, so it both shows up as being the same. So now you're probably wondering, well, when would the outside local and the outside global address ever be different then? And here's an example of where that would happen. 
and it's where we're doing two-way NAT. Now, for the CCNA exam, I'll tell you now before we get into this, that you don't really need to know two-way NAT. I'm just telling you this because if I didn't, you would be wondering about those outside addresses. So you don't need to know how to configure this for the exam, but you do need to know those four definitions. And this is going to help you really understand about it. So with two-way NAT, where that is most commonly used is if we have a merger between two companies. So here we've got company A and company B, and they're both using the private IP addresses 10.10.10.0 slash 24. So what we would do long term here is we would do IP readdressing because within the same company, you never want to have duplicate IP addresses on the inside. But because in our scenario here, we've only just done the acquisition, we haven't had time to do the IP readdressing yet, but we need immediate connectivity between those hosts. To be able to do that, we're going to have to do two-way NAT. Now, in the previous example, static NAT, the way that that is most commonly used, and it's super commonly used, is it's one-way NAT. When we've got, when we're sending traffic from the inside to the outside, we need to NAT the private IP address to the public IP address. And that's the source address that we're changing. But the destination address did not need to change. When we do two-way NAT, we actually change, we NAT both the source and the destination address. And where it's needed is for just this exact scenario here, where we've had a merger between two companies, they need connectivity to each other and they're using the same IP addresses. If they weren't using the same IP addresses, we wouldn't need to do this. So in our example, 10.10.10.10 on the left and on the right as well. So we are going to do NAT here. And for company A on the left, the 10.10.10 network, we're going to NAT it to 10.10.20. So it looks like 10.10.20 to the hosts on the right. And company B on the right, we're going to NAT their address to 10.10.30.0. So it looks like 10.10.30 to the hosts on the left. So when we send traffic from host A1 to host B1, on R1, it will translate the source address from 10.10.10.10 .10 .10 .10 to 10.10.20.10. This is similar if we were just doing our standard NAT. But we also need to translate the destination address from 10.10.30.10 .10 .10 to 10.10.10.10. .10 we need to translate the destination address as well. Because if host A1 try to send traffic to host B1's real IP address, 10.10.10.10, .10 well, that's itself. So it would never actually get there. So we need to translate both the source and the destination as well for connectivity to work. That is two-way NAT. Now, in the real world, hopefully this is quite obvious, it's very rare that you would ever need to do this. It's really just that one scenario that I gave you an acquisition between two companies, you haven't had time to do readdressing yet, and you need to have immediate connectivity. So it's a very rare situation. When we do this, so the inside local source IP of A1 on the left is going to be 10.10.10.10. .10. The inside global source IP will be 10.10.20.10. .10 .10. That's the address that we're natting it to and that it will be presented to as B1 because we can't send traffic that gets to B1 that shows up as coming from 10.10.10.10 .10 because that would be a conflict. So we're changing A1's source address to 10.10.20.10 .10 when it communicates with B1. The outside local destination IP was 10.10.30.10. .10. That is the IP address that that the host A1 actually sends traffic to. And as far as A1 is concerned, that is the destination address. But we also need to translate the destination address as well from 10.10.30.10 to 10.10.10.10, which is B1's actual IP address. Okay, so that's how to understand the output of the show IP NAT translation command 
you'll actually see me using the command in the next lecture where we're going to do a lab demo of how to configure static NAT. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.